Hey y'all. Just getting home here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, just give you a real quick introduction. Ah, ah get back over here. Uh, this is Tux, the pit lab, or sorry, not lab. He's a American Pit Bull Terrier mixed uh, with diff some different breeds. He's my rescue. This is Gypsy. Gypsy is um, two and a half months old. She's a pit bull. I've got a genetic test pending on her. She might have some other breed mixed in there. Uh, Dolce is the dominant female. Uh, Cane Corso, she's about three. Ozzy. Ozzy is my alpha male. He's almost five. Almost five. Um, and then uh, Lucia. Lucia is right there. There she is. Lucia. Lucia, amazingly, is about almost as tall as the alpha male. The adult male. And she's only barely going to be 10 months old. She's not even a year. And she's and she's bigger than Dolce, the, the adult female. Lucci. So, well, y'all, I have some kind of, I don't know. I guess you could say kind of sad news, but had kind of had to be done in my mind. So, Ozzy, as, as many of you know, um, I, I, I did not neuter Ozzy uh, for a long time, but I just had to neuter him. So I thought long and hard about it. Gypsy gear! Gypsy gear! Yeah, y'all, I really didn't want to do it, but the only reason I really did it, uh, well, a couple reasons. One, he's mid he's midlife he's um nearly five years old and so i wouldn't really wouldn't want wanted to have done it sooner than that um because you know kind of corsos are said to keep on growing until they're um nearly two years old so i would definitely wouldn't do it before then because they rely on those hormones for growth and development um but uh He's already done growing. He's been done growing for a couple years now. Um, the, the really the, the main reason that I did it was because Lucia, right here, is going to be going into heat. Um, any day now, she's going into heat. Um, and uh, my female Dolce here is already spayed because she's over two years. It's it's not recommended to spay a female kind of course so. Um, before two years old because like I said they, they still rely on their hormones um, and then I also have another female puppy and this little girl <laughs> she's picking up some speed there yeah so she's going to go into heat actually s sooner is, um, but yeah the pit bull is a smaller uh, smaller breed so they go into heat much sooner you know as, as soon as six months even S so I got a couple months before I got to start worrying about her going into heat and potentially getting pregnant um so now if I had somebody at the house that could monitor them uh or if I was home more than I am I wouldn't neuter Ozzy uh, I would just kennel him at for short periods but my living situation is, of course, you know, I live alone and I work full time. Hi, Papa. And so, yes, your papacito. And so I, I don't want to kennel. I don't want to kennel my dogs for, you know, eight hours a day, definitely. And, and even longer than that, actually. So I, I like to have them uh, running free with full access to the outside with, through their doggy door. Um, and, and, uh, you know, they're, they're here to, uh, to guard, to guard and protect. So, uh, that's why I don't want to kennel them. Now, if I had to, if it was necessary, I would, but, um, it's, it, and it's really not necessary to, to kennel them right now. 
um, at least for not for that length of time, you know. Um, so, so yeah, had to do it, Papa. And uh, I'll I'll show y'all. So it was a really a quick quick and a relatively low risk, risk surgery. It cost me about three hundred dollars. Um, kind of corso because they're so large, they require more anesthesia than most dogs, and so that's why it was a little bit more expensive than most other neuters would be. Yeah, my papa. Oh, but he, I, I think he's just doing fine. He's recovering very well. Um, he is on pain meds, so I made sure to get him some good pain meds. He's on a, a non steroidal anti inflammatory and NSAID you know sim similar to what humans would take for pain but made for dogs um it's called remedial remedial uh let's see what else yeah i'll show you a picture of the incision site post-op day three so there's a little bit of redness and swelling but Um, they left the testicular sac in place. I, one vet wanted to tack it up, uh, kind of just like um, ablate it or remove it, but his is uh, left intact. As you can see it there, empty coin purse. <laughs> Not to make light of it, I'm sure he's, uh, honestly, he probably doesn't know. He probably doesn't know it's been removed. I'm sure he, you know, he, he knows something happened down there because it hurts a little bit. But, but uh, you know, he still, he, he's going to still try to breathe. He'll still, you know, he still humps the female dogs and, and thinks he can breathe with them. So, psychologically, I don't think it does anything to the dog, honestly. Hi, Papa. Um... So, with that being said, there's a lot of controversy around um, uh, neutering large breed dogs. A lot of people will cite uh, veterinary literature and uh, saying how there may be an increased risk of uh, cancer, so, some cancers like bone cancer, in male large breed dogs like Rottweilers and Connick Corsos that have been uh, or neutered and spade but so males and females but the that those are some studies and now most of y'all know I work in the medical field uh, you know we're trained to be critically uh, think critically about uh, and really know the biases of even peer-reviewed um, research studies so you know even peer-reviewed uh, research studies, meaning, you know, it's a le legit study, they still have biases, you know, and um, I think if, if you think otherwise, you're, you're really not in tune with, <laughs> with the medical literature, you know, because mo uh, I mean, many, I'll say many, many research um, projects have some sort of a bias in them, and that may not be evident to the layperson reading them. So, now I'm not saying that those articles are uh, not correct or legit or whatever. You know, that I'm just saying that some studies have found there to be uh, not a cause and effect, but a link perhaps to increased risk of cancer and neutering. However, if you look at the total, you know, like uh, what's out there now, there are just there are you know many research studies that say otherwise that said there is no link they have found no link between increased risk of cancer and neutering so on both sides there may be bias as well so you have to have an open mind you have to look at the risk to benefit of your your each, each individual situation so what's the overall risk to the dog very minimal at this point in his life he's five years old compared to the risk of one of my females getting pregnant um, 
which would be dangerous for them to get pregnant at such a young age you know and then and then you know locking my male up in a cage for 12 hours or my female uh, I don't really don't want to do that so for the quality of life um, oh yeah also there are some um, benefits some uh, just as many research uh, publications, veterinary publications, will cite a benefit of castration in a male, cutting corso or a large breed dog, and that would be, uh, of course, uh, min minimal to zero risk of testicular cancer because you've re removed the testicles, so you're not going to get testicular cancer, or the dog's not. So, you know, with, with uh, Take everything with a grain of salt that you read, even if it's a peer-reviewed journal article. Um, if you're a lay person and you're reading that, that's all I'm saying is uh, not everything is without bias. So, and a lot of things do have, a lot of uh, art research articles, even peer-reviewed, do have bias inherent into them. So, um, so yeah, y'all had to do it. Um, I feel a lot better now that my females are not going to get pregnant. Ozzy is doing just fine. Every day he's, you know, more and more just back to his normal self. Um, oh yeah, and here's the other thing I wanted to mention. I don't believe that neutering a male it is necessarily going to make them less uh, assertive or... You know, some people say, oh, my male, you know, he's too, too much testosterone on board. He's got symptoms of, you know, just too uh, territorial, you know, he's peeing on everything. I, I, I don't believe that neutering a, a male is going to make that much a difference. Even a neutered male will do those things. I mean, I think it's negligible, the effect of, of those male tr tendencies and traits and and behaviors, I think it's negligible. The effect of, of neutering a male will be on, on, on those um, behaviors. Um, so, so that is not the reason to do it in my mind. Um, I purely did it because I don't want to lock, I don't want to uh, cage any of my dogs for a, a lengthy period of time. And, uh, and I don't want to risk my females getting pregnant. So, that is what I did. And, uh, as you can see, Ozzy's doing just fine. He's just, you wouldn't know it. If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't know it. Um, yeah, he's very active. This is post-op day. Let's see, it was Saturday that I did it. It's now Tuesday. So post op day three, and he's doing just like uh, just like normal. So probably is is virtually virtually painless because he's on that uh, anti-inflammatory and anti-pain medication. So yeah, y'all. Well, anyways, um, comment down below what your thoughts are and what you've heard and. Like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Everything you read is not um, necessarily fact. And uh, you have to really think critically about um, even medical literature that's peer-reviewed. And, uh, yeah, so. This baby girl, I gotta get this little girl inside for some dinner. And the sun's going down. Oh, okay, chips again. Well, she is rambunctious tonight. I well, hope you all are having a good night, and uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Say bye, baby girl. Yes. Yes. Gypsy <laughs> here. Okay, Papa, see you too. Let's go inside. It's hungry. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Okay, Papa. Let's go inside.
Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Come on. 